In our investigation of the five senses, let's first start with vision. In the eye, light passes through a small adjustable opening known as the pupil. Behind the pupil is the lens, the transparent structure that changes shape to help focus images on the retina. The iris, or what others see as your eye color, is a ring of muscle tissue that forms around the pupil and controls the size of the pupil opening. The cornea is the transparent front part of the eye that covers the iris and pupil, providing most of the eye's optical power. Together with the lens, the cornea refracts light and as a result helps the eye to focus. As light rays enter the eye, they hit the fovea, the central focus point in the retina around which the eye's cones cluster. Along the inner surface of the eye is the retina, which contains receptor rods and cones and layers of neurons that begin the processing of visual information. Now let's take a closer view at the retina. Here are rods, retinal receptors that detect black, white, and gray. They are necessary for peripheral and twilight vision. Next are cones, retinal receptors concentrated near the center of the retina. Cones function only in well-lit areas and detect fine detail and color. The message from the cones and rods then reach the optic nerve, the nerve that carries neural impulses from the eye to the brain. Optic chiasm is the part of the brain where the optic nerves partially cross. The optic chiasm is located at the bottom of the brain, immediately below the hypothalamus. The trichromatic theory states that the retina contains three different color receptors, sensitive to red, green, and blue, and when stimulated, combine to produce perception of any color. The opponent process theory suggests that color perception is controlled by the activity of two opponent systems a blue-yellow mechanism, and a red-green mechanism. The part where the optic nerve leaves the eye is called the blind spot, as there are no receptor cells located there. Color blindness is a hereditary disorder caused by cells in the retina that incorrectly process colors. Specialized cone cells, which are responsible for color vision, lack the ability to send the correct signals to the brain. Did you know? Sometimes we notice spots that seem to float across our field of vision, especially if we are looking at a bright background. These floaters are usually caused by bits of debris floating around the vitreous, the jelly-like substance that fills most of the eye. Human sight only detects a small portion of rays from the electromagnetic spectrum because there is simply no need for them to detect the entire spectrum of rays. I mean, we're not bees for Christ's sake, we don't need to say see UV rays. Now let's take a look at our sense of hearing. In actuality, the sounds we hear are actually sound waves. The sound waves first travel through the auditory canal, or ear canal, which is a tube running from the outer ear to the middle ear. The waves then hit the eardrum, causing it to vibrate and move to the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. The waves reach the oval window, the cochleus membrane, and moves fluid that fills the cochlea. The movement of fluid causes ripples in the basilar membrane, which is lined with hair cells. The movement of hair cells causes impulses in nerve fibers which meet at the auditory nerve and carry the message to the temporal lobe. Pitch is how high or low a tone is. It is dependent upon the frequency of the vibration. The frequency of a wave is the number of complete wavelengths that pass a point in a given amount of time. The place theory explains how we hear high-pitched sounds. In hearing, the theory states that we hear pitch based on where the cochleus membrane is stimulated. The hammer, anvil, and stirrup are the smallest bones in the human body and are full size at birth. All three control fit on a penny. 
Human hearing can detect a smaller portion of frequency waves than during prehistoric years. Nowadays, humans no longer require the same sensitivity as was needed when we lived and hunted outdoors. The five tastes include salty, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami, the taste of meat. Sensory interaction is the principle that one sense may influence another. For example, yum, yum, yum. you are unable to taste food when your nose is clogged up when you have a cold. Why can't I taste? Did you know that the average lifespan of a taste bud is 10 days? Humans seem to have developed receptor cells for nutrients necessary for survival. Anything other than energy-rich nutrients key to our survival was unnecessary and our bodies did not develop receptor sites for such tastes. Endorphins are neurotransmitters released in response to pain. As Mr. Potato Head is being stabbed, endorphins rush to his side, acting as a natural painkiller. The gate control theory states that the spinal cord contains a neurological gate that blocks pain signals or allows them to pass through to the brain. The gate is opened by the activity of pain signals traveling up small fibers and is closed by the activity in large fibers or by information coming from the brain. Kinesthesis is the system for sensing the position and movement of individual body parts. Mr. Potato Head is able to demonstrate this as he is aware of his current position and avoids this hole. Mr. Potato Head's vestibular sense monitors the head's position and movement. In the inner ear are semicircular sacs and vestibular sacs that contain fluid that moves when the head moves. This movement causes receptors to send messages to the cerebellum and makes Mr. Potato Head aware that he has fallen. A sensory receptor is a sensory nerve ending that recognizes a stimulus in the internal or external environment of an organism. Our sense of touch is a combination of four senses, pressure, warmth, cold, and pain. Touch receptors are for pain. Skin is the least sensitive in the middle of your back and the most sensitive in your hands, fingertips, and lips. Animals have highly specialized touch. For example, snakes are highly sensitive to heat. Humans do not have specialized touch because it's not necessary to have this. Although humans have developed more reactive pain receptors, most likely due to the varying activities that we perform daily, such as cooking, cleaning, and working. When we take in a breath of air, odor molecules are inhaled and activate olfactory receptor cells, which then send electric signals up the olfactory bulb through the olfactory nerve. The olfactory bulb receives the signals and then perceives the odor. A pheromone is a chemical substance produced by an organism that affects the behavior of other organisms of the same species. We each have an individual scent that plays a role in finding our future spouse. Your sense of smell is least acute in the morning. Our ability to perceive odors increases as the day wears on. Humans have developed highly functional systems of smell. This comes as a result of the many roles that smell play, plays in human survival and reproduction, such as identifying food as well as picking up a mate's pheromones.